seek your protection and seek your turn. Experience a great victory over a great walled city. Uh, of course, that city was Jericho. Now, when you read the scriptures there, and you see the protocol, you see the instructions that God gave them how to uh, defeat this, this city, and they followed it to the T. Uh, for seven days, they marched around the city of Jericho, I mean, in, in a complete circle, quietly. Now, you are you are in your house, and people are, I mean, are, are circling, circling your house, and they ain't saying nothing, just marching around. I mean, it's not a single word. Every day, I mean, that becomes um, uh, annoying. You know, that, 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 that can become nerve wrecking. God initiates plans, structures for us to follow, but sometimes we question. And then we rebel. In chapter number seven, they face a little unwalled city. And what they did not consider that it was a threat. They just defeated the gigantic walled city. The wall fell down. Historians said the wall of Jericho was wide enough for two chariots to ride abreast. That's not why now chariot was probably approximately 336, maybe four feet wide. And uh, with a pause, and so the how to them to ride side by side, that was a gigantic war. Having visited the Holy Land on a couple of occasions, they showed us the excavation of the, the place where they said this was the um, uh, the, um, um, of the part of the wall of Jericho, and of course, it was a huge wall if that uh, was it. But nevertheless, they were embarrassed, they were defeated, they suffered a great loss. And of course, not only did they lose the battle, but they suffered the loss of lives. In chapter number eight, they found themselves facing the same city. That they faced just a few days ago in chapter number seven, a little city called Ai. And the reason for their defeat was many. But the primary reason was that there was sin in their midst that had not been dealt with. Even though it was a secret sin, it was still sin. God did not look at the individual, God looked at the nation. And so, this has caused them to be defeated as they are. Now they are, um, uh, they are, the second time, they are in the same situation. Again, emerged in a battle with this little city, but not long embarrassed to them. The eye in the Bible is a type of the flesh. The word AI means a heap of ruins. This is a good way. To describe our flesh. Yesterday, as I stood by the graveside, as a matter of fact, before we went there, I went to the after church, how great they make a dead body look. I mean, they fix that dead body up and they make it look like it's just taking a nap in some cases. When before that body probably uh, deceased, it might have been in a terrible state of presentation. You know, you've been around the hospital, you've seen loved ones in the hospital, and sometimes they've got tubes coming out your hair, out your throat. You know, every place has an I mean, and then sometimes you can't close your mouth. And you stand up there, and your eyes and everything, you look at them, and I mean, they look terrible. And they're alive. But now when they're dead, you see, they don't feel nothing anymore, that body. So they can take that body and they can fix it and make it uh, to look like something that it is not, and therefore it is deceptive. And so the first mention of this city is found in the book of Genesis, 
in connection with the life of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, it says, and he removed from thence unto the, the mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord in Genesis chapter 13, verse 3. And he went on his journey from, from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. And so the Bible tells us that Abraham pitched his tent between the house of God, the house of the Lord, and the world. He pitched his tent between Bethel and Hai. Bethel means the house of God. Do you know people are in the house of God, but they are holding on to the world for them? It is interesting to see that many, many Christians, they are in God's house, and they are praising Him. I observed this yesterday after the funeral, we went to the repast. So they had two repasts. Uh, there was his wife, Jenny, she had one at their house, and then my first cousin, his name, which is his sister, she had one at our house. I only went to it, but I was looking because I, you know, I, I don't want to offend any of the family. Because, you know, I'm um, well, I got the that I love. But anyway, I went, to, I went by this name. I stopped there first by Jenny, and then I let them see my face, and, you know, uh, they gave me some, what you can call it, and, uh, you know, I took it, whatever. But then I left, and I went to his way, and then I, I got there, and what man? But what got me? Here was this man. I mean, he was having a jolly good time, praising God, and I mean, I went, as far as I knew, he's a Christian. And take this bottle out when we got in the house. I don't know about passes. I don't know about passes. I was a child. And, you know, he poured a cup of his side with a sip in the morning and the evening and sip in the morning. And uh, I thought it was apple cider at first. And one of the other brothers said, Man, so you see how, so you see how selfish he is? So he bought his breakfast, and he ain't offered no one. He's bringing it all himself. And when he said breakfast, I was lost at first. What I have not heard is the breakfast house in Ghana. They, they, they advertised for them this one time. One time, I can't remember if they had a breakfast, but they used to sing about it. And then, and then, then I realized, yes, sir. Now, I don't know how much I'm going to do. Tells us how we can 
ambushed our AI. But we can conquer our victories. In verse 1 through 2, it reads as follows. And then the Lord spoke to Joshua after the death of Achan, God tells him, or tells him to go to AI. In the, and the second time, he also tells him, oh God, I'm reading the wrong thing. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given unto thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil, you ought to bracket that up, or highlight that. Remember with this book, you never cross the problem in Jericho? The spoil. Now God is telling them, this is what he's telling them now. He says, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. He said, lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. Before God said, do not touch the spoil. Now he said, you can have the spoil. Is that contradictory? No. You see, God has a different timing for man. And so we see the victory promise here. Joshua chapter 7, verse 2 to 3. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethlehem, on the east side of Bethel. And spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country, and the men went up and view Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither. For they are but few. Now, I don't know if you got what we read in verse number one. In verse number one of chapter eight, God said, The Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou of this thing. Take all the people of war. Now, here, the people, when they Went up, they said to this AI, they told Joshua, we don't need all the people. God said, take all the people of God. They said, we don't need that. This will be a handful of the people. There ain't no threat. We just defeated the big Jericho. Why do we need to exasperate the whole army? By the offer of the woman, let's just have we can handle this. They put themselves together. God is in heaven looking and listening. God just told you what to do. But you do not see the importance of doing what God said. You see, the Lord called them to return to the place of their greatest defeat. God knew that they needed to overcome the defeat of their eyes. Sometimes when we fall into the situation of defeat, we become depressed. Now, when you are depressed, you can see it in your life, in your action. You can see it as you go through life for love. It is the same thing that happens to have how many times have we lost the battle to the flesh because we did not follow the instructions that God gave us. It looks simple. How many times we did this? How many times have we fallen and wondered if we will ever get back to where we were before? The world looks at it and laughs. I, 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 this morning, just before I went to the airport, I was talk, talking to a man, and he, you know, he liked to talk Bible, and he was talking, and, and uh, another gentleman, you know, but they were, the, I, I, when I was in the talk, talking, they were talking, and they were arguing about speaking in tongues. And one of the men, he explained what speaking in tongues really is, and he was right. I listened, I observed. And I, I, I know they were trying to say they were sucking me into the conversation, but you know I'm smart. I, I you know I was in, I was inviting. I was something like them. Uh, you know, they were looking for God's side when uh, for Kai Kai when they blew me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wasted your time. You put the best looking crowd, big, you know, big on that. You throw the front of your mouth, and you smell it and tell it. Is that what I did? You know, I mean, I, I, I was inviting. But one of the crowd, he explained, he explained, and he said, listen. He draw an illustration to the man and say, if 
the Chinese or the or Italian or whatever. He said that and another man said, but the Bible said, um, uh, unknown tongue. Another fellow tried to tell him, it is unknown to the people who never who was with them. And he couldn't buy that. And I, and I, and I wanted to take him to the book of Acts. He said, boy, I was right there. But I said, you don't know the Lord, man. And you know, J.D. and who? He got a smile. What care is their salvation, their soul? And I'm not going to use, I'm not going to try to teach them doctrine before I teach them salvation. You see? But, so I just stood back and I listened to them and there. And so they were looking at me, you know, they didn't want a pastor or a preacher, they were trying to see if I was going to I never commented. Sometimes you got to be wise to serve. How many times have we fallen in, into the trap? The Lord had a word for them. Hear what he said to them. He said, Hear. Not. You know why God said fear not? They were defeated before. They went to Ai. Thirty of their men were killed. You think you think they're gonna be eager and excited to go back there again, knowing that they just suffered casualties? God knew that they would be afraid. God said to them, in spite of your rebellion against my command, the Lord's word to us is. Those that said to them, fear not, I am giving you a second chance. Thank God we are the God that is a God of first chance, second chance, third chance, sometimes fourth chance. God is not with us. When we write people off, we write them off. It is a blessing to know that I do not have to live in the feet as a Christian. It is a blessing to know that I am no longer a slave to sin, says the songwriter. Number 6 and 14 says, For since you don't have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So I am thankful that God has promised us the victory. And the victory can be ours. You see, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 57, But thanks be to God that given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory in Jesus. That's why we can sing that strong. We can sing that with assurance and with gladness and with joy. I will remind you once again that the Lord did not save our souls to leave us defeated. You see, He wants us to have the victory. He wants us to have power. He wants us to be humbly under the weight of the flesh. The flesh will defeat us if we allow it to happen. He saved you and I to walk in victory that He can give us the joy that is necessary for us to live his way and not the way of our own. And so, so to do this, we must not be impulsive. Jacob was impulsive. And this impulsiveness cost the entire nation. And so, in verse number two, he says, And thou should do to hear hand. And a king, as thou didst unto Jericho, God told him this. God said, I want you to destroy Ai, humiliate Ai, let you live Jericho, a king. You see, he said, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof should he take for a prey unto yourself. He says, they be an ambush for the trap. For the city behind. You do the AI. What you did to Jericho, except for the fact that the AI, you can take the Babylonian gold. The AI, you can take the gold. The AI, you can take the silver. The AI, you can take the cattle. But when they were in Jericho, he said, Do not take anything. Boy, he allowed. This lustful eye to get a hold of the things of the world and the looks so glittering, so attractive, and our heart began to pulsate, want those things so much so that we are unwilling to wait on the Lord. So I better think about it again, and I am going to have the chance again. That may have been the, uh, the thoughts of Achan. Jacob would have waited just a few more days. Yeah, I was there. 
Jericho was just the first stepping stone, but there I would have been the next thread of the step. We can saw this. We couldn't wait. How many of us find ourselves in a similar situation? And Pastor, you, you, you don't understand. You know, I, you know, I got you in school, and I got this to do, and I got that. Brother, you know, brother, you know, I, 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 I can't forget all this to the Lord right now. I need this right now. Boy, you would have given God that ten dollars, but then again, a thousand dollars. Some people they say, you know, I'm looking at it, man. Listen, you know, this is that's what you can saw. You can saw, man. Look at the Lord. You understand? Look what happened here again. But remember now. Jericho had a descendant. Had he taken that piece of fabric out, they would know it was from Jericho. Had he taken that gold out, they would know it was from Jericho. He could not use them without giving an account for how he got them. So he dug a hole in the center of his tent buried them and hid them. The next battle was ruined. These innocent members on their knees, they are praying, they are ionizing with heaven, and their prayer are hidden as, a, as if it's against grass. Going to well, and they are sincere, they are weeping, they are, they, 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 they are giving God all of their power their soul, there was an Achan whose tent floor is filled with the reject from God. And because there was an Achan, God was saying, I can't ask you. Not that God will give you your prayer, but God said, I can't ask you. I can't give you the request that you're asking for. You got to get rid of the sin. The sin was Achan, one man. It was Sister Achan, one woman. It was two little kids. I didn't put you there. I didn't count the kids here. He had a donkey or two. The Bible said God told Joshua to take Achan, his wife, his children, his cattle. Take them outside the city, stone them and burn them. And then come back and pray. You see. Thou shalt be the AI of a king as thou didst unto Jericho. If Achan would have only waited. Oh, what a difference if you can wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and he shall renew your strength. So he said, Wait, I say on the Lord. That's the chapter 6, verse 7, the commandment says, And the city shall be conquered, even it and all that are therein. Speaking of AI. And the Lord only, he said, It's a man of Jericho. He says, um, He says, He says, He says to the Lord, And only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that he sent. <coughs> <clears throat> Verse 18. And, <clears throat> and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed thing, lest I make yourselves a curse. Lest you make yourselves a curse. He said, if you take the forbidden things of Jericho, then do it be forbidden. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. Verse 19. All the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. That he has put in his treasury. That's what he can do. That's what uh, 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 he can do. What a lesson for you and me. You know, I will never count my tithe and offering in my budget. Why 
first thing I do is take off God's money. Then I come right out. See, a lot of people, they start spending first on what means God gives them. It means we need it. And then the better they say, well, God understands, God knows the things to us. That some people come to an idea that relates to God, but then when they get in trouble, who they go to, they want to spend the God. Unfortunately, this flesh wants what it wants, want it now, they don't care. We are big regardless of the area that we are in. We just want to do what we want to do. When we can learn to wait on the Lord, we are well on our way to victory in the Christian life. Psalm is one of the verses in our verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord and so that they and in his word do my trust. Wait on the Lord. So, first,
for they will come on after us till we have drawn them from the city for they will say they flee before us as at the first therefore we will flee before them listen that's the harvest we can make this thing look like we are cowards we got a drop set we got our we, we, we got our swordsmen we got our archers they are hiding around the corner you know you do? You know, it just it gets easier. And when they, when they say, okay, well, you know, we don't kill, they get them with war. Let's get them. Oh, we see coming around. Let's read on. Verse 7. It says, Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when ye have taken the city that ye shall set the city on fire according to the commandment of the Lord, as shall ye do. See, I have commanded you. Just to therefore set them for they went to lie in ambush and abode between Bethel and Ai. On the west side of Ai, the Joshua lodged that night among the people. Joshua rose in early morning and Numbered the people and went up he and the elders of Israel before the people of Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. And he took about 5,000 men and sent them to lie in, in ambush between Bethel and Ai. On the west side of the city. Remember the first time they said 2,000 men is enough. That's what it's not. Imagine maybe 1,000 person could have defeated the army. But God should take all the people of war. And that's what Joshua done this time. Verse number 13 And then they accept the people, even all the host that was on the north of the city. And their, and their lives appeared upon the west of the city. Joshua went that night <coughs> in the midst of the valley. And it came to pass, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hesitated and rose up early. And the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. And he had all his people at the time appointed before the plain. But he was not, he did not know <coughs> that there were lies in ambush against him behind the city. Listen. Uh, let me report that verse number 14. You know, sometimes you know, you say, I'm a Christian. I say, God, I'm scared of nothing. Yeah, you're foolish. Because you don't know God told him to listen. I don't want you to go there and be bold and bad. I want you to hide. I want you to sneak attack them. Sometimes you got to sneak attack them. Sometimes you got to catch the enemies off guard. That's what God told you to do. God said, I, in ambush, I want you to entrap them. Not because you are a child of God and not because you know that we serve the most the almighty God, that God gave us details and plan how to live our Christian lives. Let us follow the detail and the plan of the God to us. Even though God can just, I mean, it's a clip of finger, God just can uh, uh, take the thought and it's done. But God said, I want you to do it this way. Verse 15, he says, he says, And just when all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness, and all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them. And they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai of Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open. And pursued after Israel. That's what God wants us to have them to get them away from their stronghold. Now they can't get any reinforcement. They are away from their stronghold now, shut the city down. Now they are there now. They can't get back. They get, they get trapped. Listen, God, this is the way God wants us to do it. We do it God's way, but not our way. <coughs> Israel already learned what will happen when you do things your way. When you do it God's way, when you fight the battle by following His plan, you cannot fail. They have also learned what happened when they refused to do it God's way. They learned that failure to wait on the Lord can result in catastrophe. 
in the casualties. You see, the person who goes against God and his will will find themselves in such great poverty. <coughs> Excuse me. Then, I get, I've never noticed this before, except that I believe the Bible is alive, it's God's word. And then, Brother um, uh, uh, Sam was reading the scripture in the night, and he said, My words will not return unto me void, but will do what I set it out to do. And you know, there are times when it isn't God who is dictating. You know, he said, Man, I. What I said about it, and I said, oh, I never saw that before. You think every time the word of God preaches that there'll be some, you know, with God, but it's not God all the time. God said, Man, I said it out. And so here it is. Remember, we are talking about fighting this flesh. We all carry around. This is, we, we are living in this. This is what we are. What we are going to pursue victory over. Uh, uh, my flesh, your flesh. We have to follow God's detail in our life. No other plan will work. I'll say it again. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you do it, no matter how detailed you are, if it is not in the will of God, it's not going to accomplish much. You see, God's plan for dealing with the flesh going forward. We need to follow His plan, His detail. We are strengthened spiritually when we are exposed to things of the Lord. You see, notice four things here that we have. One, the word of God. This is no fluke. This is no missing dixie. This is a fact. God's word is true. I think the Psalms were the Psalms of 119, or 35, or 86. I don't know if I can exactly in heaven. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, I give one great desire to the sin of the word that he may grow. The word of God fertilizes our lives, it strengthens our lives, it, 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 it fortifies our lives, and we can grow, we can be strengthened by the word of God. Second Timothy 2 15 says, Study to show ourselves the full one of God. A workman. That may not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. You can, listen, you can use the word wrongly. He said, rightly dividing the word of God. People use the word of God, use it wrong, it will not accomplish what God said it will to accomplish when it's used wrong. You know, somebody, if you miss these little key points, you'll be reading. Uh, preacher, uh, 
And uh, he had a, he had a few friends and who were not saved. And so when we pray, we pray for them every day. We pray for God to save them. And of course, um, uh, we live to see uh, the three of his friends saved. And, and he died before the four of them got saved. And at his funeral, when the preacher got to do the guys in here preaching at the, the funeral message, the last friend walked the aisles at the funeral and got saved. He didn't, he didn't live to see it, but God keeps his word. Continue to pray. You may not live to see your prayer come to realization, but if you pray and you trust God, I believe God will bring it to a realization. Church attendance. I don't know who it was. I don't, I don't know who it was us. Do you know, since this COVID, a lot of people came going back to church. There's people, uh, pastors are still fighting to try and get people back in church. What's the problem now? Hebrews 10 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, the man of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Jesus Christ is coming. Let us try to encourage people to come to church. It's important to come to church. Even one of 
these essential area in our lives. We soon find ourselves suffering spiritually. This is what happened in Israel. They neglected the things of God. They followed their own details of plans, and soon they end up in a defeated nation. Casualties was the result. Do not neglect even one of these essentials. If you do it, you will feel it. Eat the flesh, ignore the spiritual uh, nature, and you're headed for trouble. Be the spirit. Stow the flesh. Don't forget our service, pray for one another, and pray for each other. God, we do this system. 